I don't care if 120 members of the state legislature hate my guts. I don't care if the union thugs hate my guts. I don't care if two-thirds of the state hates my guts. Hi, I'm Tim Cavanaugh for Reason TV. We're here with Dale Ogden, the Libertarian candidate for governor of California. Dale is one of six candidates in this race, the best known of whom are Jerry Brown for the Democrats and Meg Whitman for the Republicans. You're running for governor as the Libertarian candidate. Have you done any polling? Do you have any idea where you stand right now in uh, percentages? You threatening Meg? I don't know about threatening. There are polls out there that show a large number of people want somebody else. But the polls don't really ask who. Often the Republican Party will complain that the Libertarians are drawing off votes and allowing the Democrat to win. What would you say to somebody who takes that kind of argument seriously and is saying this is not a presidential election where the state's already locked up and my vote doesn't matter. This is one where if I vote third party, it actually could have a consequence for me. The problem with that argument is we end up with people like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Meg Whitman who are liberals. They're not Republicans. They don't stand for what Republicans claim to stand for. Republicans often campaign like libertarians and then when they get elected they govern like Democrats. You have a, and a proposal in your platform to uh, reduce spending to 1998 levels. What made you settle on 98? That was before the latest criminal collusion between Gray Davis and the, the public employee unions, where they increased the pensions from 2% to 3% and said it won't cost anything, we'll make it up at all in our investment gains. What do you think of Governor Schwarzenegger's effort to roll back SB 400, which was signed in 1999 by Gray Davis? Way too little, way too late. I mean, the fact is that the, even the numbers that come out of CalPERS are dishonest. They have unreasonable assumptions built into their estimates of the deficits. Unbiased uh, estimates of the deficit and the funding for public employee pensions is about half a trillion dollars. There is no way the state of California will ever be able to pay those amounts. There need to be some dramatic reductions, not only for new hires, not only for current people, but for people who have already retired. Let me ask you practically and philosophically. Practically, my understanding is that those, those contracts are inviolate, and even in cases like Vallejo, where the city went bankrupt, they ended up honoring the bulk of these contracts. And philosophically, isn't there some sanctity in a contract, no matter how screwy it is, that shouldn't be finagled with after the fact? The fact is the state doesn't have the money. The state of California, under our Constitution, is a sovereign entity. And like any other banana republic, and that's how it's been run, uh, we can repudiate our debt. As a libertarian, I very strongly believe that people should be forced to live up to their contracts. But I believe those union contracts were entered into with what either is or approaches criminal behavior on the part of Gray Davis and the unions. What are some things that the average person in California expects out of the government that you would be willing to say, no, you can't have that anymore? There's an awful lot of social welfare programs. Even Meg Whitman says, you know, we've got a third of the welfare recipients in the United States and 12% of the population. Our benefits are so generous that we attract deadbeats from all over the world, including the other 49 states. Another area, a lot of licensing and regulatory agencies. We license more occupations in California than any other state. Licensing doesn't keep us from getting incompetent doctors and crooked lawyers, so you know, why do we care if we license somebody who gives us a haircut? A lot of uh, you know, non-libertarian types out there would say, yeah, I'm not for more welfare benefits, and, and certainly you shouldn't have to get a license to you know, be a hairstylist. But what about stuff that a lot of people like? A lot of people like state parks. They like the roads to be in good condition without having to pay a toll. What do you say to them? First off, the roads aren't in good condition. <laughs> There's huge amounts of gasoline taxes that are diverted to other uses. If you want to use the roads, you pay gasoline taxes. If you want to use the parks, you pay to use the parks. There's actually you know, a relatively small percentage of the population that uses these things. So let that percentage of the population pay for it. Your platform contains a lot of attractive material about getting rid of duplicative agencies, 
rolling back a lot of the regulatory agencies, reducing the size of the government employee payrolls. How do you expect to get that stuff done, given that nobody else has? I think that nobody else has really wanted to. The line item veto is a very powerful tool the governor has. I'm not running for governor so that everybody loves me. I'm running for governor to get the state's fiscal house in order. And I don't care if 120 members of the state legislature hate my guts. I don't care if the union thugs hate my guts. I don't care if the government employees hate my guts. I don't care if two-thirds of the state hates my guts. At the end of four years, when taxes are lower, spending's lower, regulation is reduced, and we've created five million new jobs in the state of California, and our unemployment is three and a half percent, the run-of-the-mill everyday taxpayer is going to be very happy. Do you think that's a good campaign slogan? Vote for Dale Ogden, you'll hate his guts? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> The longest part of your platform is on immigration. I should congratulate you. You just got John and Ken's endorsement. John and Ken, by the way, two extremely popular talk radio hosts on KFI down here in L.A. And yet your immigration proposals are a lot less punitive than Meg Whitman's. Why do you think that uh, they went for you? What I offered was honesty, and, and I didn't try to take two positions at the same time. Philosophically, I believe in free trade and labor, just like free trade in goods and services. We don't have an immigration problem. We have a problem with the welfare system that attracts people for all the freebies we have. We have laws that force hospitals to provide care, which basically makes the healthcare workers slaves. We have uh, the war on drugs, which creates tremendous profit opportunities for organized crime. We have idiotic foreign policy that creates the terrorism issue. In an ideal world, if the govern didn't, government didn't control so much, then the only way people could come here from other countries would be to be invited by a citizen and sponsored by that citizen. If you come here and you trespass, you're a criminal. What's the magic uh, element of being invited by somebody. Why shouldn't I just, you know, be living in Oaxaca and say, hey, I want to start a hotel, and so let me go up to the United States and do it where it's possible to do? Well, if I've got the money to do that, and I can buy the property or rent the property, I don't see a problem with that. Uh, you come here with money or skills, you know, you contribute to you our come, economy. Well, how about if you come just as a, as a migrant worker and say, I, I'm going to trade my labor to somebody who wants well, to if, pay if, for it? if there's somebody that wants to pay for you, then they can bring you here. You mentioned how many, uh, how many people are collecting welfare in California, how big the state employee roles are, and yet it's a state with a long history as sort of a maverick uh, place that weirdos like to come here and do freakazoid things. I don't think the freakazoid uh, population is big enough to make much difference. You'd be surprised. Um, <laughs> perhaps. I'm positive that the government employees are a very strong voting bloc. They all have their own marching orders from the union and they go to the polls and like good little robots, they pull their you know, levers for the Democrats to make sure they stay in there. But it's not big enough to sway the whole election. There's a lot of taxpayers and there's a lot of unemployed people who want jobs and are saying, you know, this is crazy, you know, where, where are the new businesses? We have a bunch of uh, pretty interesting initiatives on the ballot this year. The one that's getting the most national attention is Prop 19, which would uh, legalize and tax cannabis. Where do you stand on that? I'm certainly going to vote for Prop 19. I strongly support it. I prefer it not be taxed. But it's all about closing the deficit, isn't it, right? This is... Uh... Well, I, I prefer to close the deficit by reducing spending. Do you view yourself as trying to become governor or trying to get the message out there? Well, I'm doing both. There's a lot of people out there that are just saying, I'm tired of voting for the lesser of two evils. Maybe it's a long shot, but even if it doesn't happen, that message is getting out there.